Merry Christmas. This is our final devotion, and it is Christmas morning. And if you're watching it as it's being posted, it's 10 a.m. This is Pastor Diana Google from the Lutheran Church of Our Savior. And if you would like to be a part of a worship service, we post our Christmas Day service at 1030. You notice we began with a picture of our nativity set, and the baby Jesus has arrived, but the wise men are still making their trek. Today's ser service, or devotion if you will, is entitled The Promised Son, and it contains aspects of the Christmas story found in Matthew chapters 1 and 2, and Luke chapters 1 and 2. In Luke chapter 1, verse 35, we hear, And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. When it was almost time for Jesus to be born, Joseph and Mary had to travel to Joseph's hometown, Bethlehem. It was a very long journey, and they were coming for the census. So Bethlehem was crowded, bursting at the seams. Some people stayed with relatives, but Mary and Joseph had no place to stay. Because it was so crowded, they ended up staying in a stable, which was actually kind of carved out of the hillside like a cave with the animals. Common folks back then didn't have lots of extra guest rooms and things, so that's why they were in such a state. And it was into that surrounding, that kind of context, that Jesus was born. The Son of God that God had promised so long ago, the King of kings who would reign forever, was not surrounded by dignitaries born in an opulent setting, but rather he was surrounded by animals in a cave. Jesus was born for not only the rich, but for the poor common people. And he was wrapped in swaddling cloths like any other baby, and his manger was the animal's feeding trough. That same night, some shepherds were outside watching their sheep. Shepherds were not the most reputable people. They were poor and unschooled, scruffy and untrusted. Most people didn't like them. But God chose to send a very important message to these not-so-important people. God's angel came to the shepherds and said, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And suddenly a great number of angels appeared, and their glory and light filled the skies, and they were praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth among those whom he is pleased. So the Son of God, promised long ago, was finally here. The shepherds were afraid, but they listened to the angel and they found Jesus, a baby born in a common stable, wrapped in common cloth. And when they saw that, they knew that God, the rescuer, the Messiah, the anointed one, had come for them too, and they praised God. And they told Mary all that they had seen and heard from the angels, and she looked at her tiny son Someday, she thought, he will bring peace to this broken world and rescue us all. But the shepherds were not the only people who came to see the new king. Wise, rich men from the east saw a star rise in the sky. They knew it pointed to the king of the Jews, descendants of the Israelites God had rescued long ago. And they lived far away, but this king was special, and he came to bless all the families of the earth." And because they lived far away, they didn't arrive at the same time as the shepherds. They arrived perhaps even a year or so later. That's why our wise men travel the length of the church to get to the manger scene. And when they came and saw Jesus, they fell down and worshipped him. They brought him expensive gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So our question is, who did Jesus come to rescue? And our story tells us that the promised son came to rescue all people, Israelite or not, rich or not. He came to bring joy, hope, and peace. He came to be our sacrifice, to die in our place for our sin. He came to be our king, to defeat evil and death, and to make everyone and everything good and new again. Today's final prayer posture, 
And at this point, let me tell you, the two I did not include um, have to do with uh, supplication, which you're laying flat, face down, or lying on your back. But today's has to do with your hands. And when you pray, your hands may be raised, they may be raised, they may be in a traditional prayer posture, they may be crossed, they may simply lay at your waist. Let us pray. On this Christmas morn, O oh Lord, we thank you for the blessing of your son Jesus. We thank you for an innocent baby born in a manger who grew to a man who lived among us and taught us to treat all people as your children. We're so grateful that the birth of this child, even though it leads to his death, leads to his resurrection, which means we are all rescued and saved. Help us to remember that he is truly the reason for this season. And because of that, we are truly and deeply blessed. For in his name we pray, amen. And now we close with an image of the Christmas tree filled with symbols depicting the life of Jesus, gold and white showing his purity and his royalty, and a green evergreen tree which reminds us of everlasting life. Peace be with you.